bust my mind, it's hard to find <laughs> So we look, search and find No, 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 no The one close to a heart The one close to a heart It's the time that Mama, what been doing about? What been doing about? Yeah, gosh. When I up, 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 me back, up, me back. Oh yeah, he call me since he's yo ya. Oh, oh yeah, he call me some help from the wall. Big time, na 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 na. I get come moon, I get pan, I get walk. Big time, na 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 na. I get come moon. I get
Tuella Bantu Smamosa Them call me Mr. Dove Dove Now you know Greetings, greetings, Massive. Uh, we are going live digitally. We'll be having a visual reasoning today. You know, things are visually lately due to the pandemic, my people. So welcome to uh, first, first, first virtual reggae talks. Uh, my name is Soli Malazi, calling you from Soweto, South Africa. Welcome, my people. Uh, we're going to have a conversation today. I hope you are live. Please on Facebook, please share, 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 share our page. If you have brothers outside the borders of South Africa, please share my people, you know, share. Let's push the music. Let's share the news. Let's have a conversation. Let's have talks. Uh, please share at check my uh, Facebook uh, wall at and my page at uh, San Jeming or at Solimalazi, hashtag Reggae Talks, hashtag San Jeming. So let's go uh, without further ado, without wasting time. I'd like to welcome you, my people. I have a very, very, very lineup of important, important guests and experts who've been in reggae music for a long, a long time. They're going to give you an insight. They're going to talk about a lot of things. So we, we're we not going to just talk for the sake of talking, but we're still going to have fun. It's not a serious thing. It's not an interview. We're just going to have conversations, you know, looking at reggae where it used to be, where we're we going, we know the isms, we know the issues. So those are the things we'll be looking at. So without wasting time, my, my people, please make sure that you share on, on, on Facebook, you're on Facebook, and also check on YouTube at the Ritual Media Stores, or at Ritual Stores. Please check at Ritual YouTube, we are live there. We are live on San Jeming. Uh, we are live on my Facebook wall, so Limalati. So without wasting time, I'd like to welcome our guest. I have uh, four guests. Initially, we had the five. Unfortunately, some of our guests couldn't, uh, couldn't join us, but hopefully, due to technical issues, but hopefully along the way they will join us because we have a minimum of an hour uh, to have this talk. So please join, share, my people. It's important to share. And as well, don't forget to ask questions on, on, on the on Facebook, on my well, if, if you have que already there's about close to 20 questions, we still need more so that our guests can discuss, can have a conversation so that we learn and have solutions, you know? So without wasting time, I'd like to welcome, I think I'm gonna start, they say we, you start with the elders, <laughs> you know? So I'm gonna uh, start, I think from uh, Runbeck, I'd, I'd like to welcome uh, our elder, you know, one of our legends, Mr. Richard Siluma, Sagi Sagila. Can you just say something and welcome the, the audience? Um, I would like to um, thank you guys by putting this together. Um, it's long overdue because a lot of our people, they wanted to know what's happening with the reggae in South Africa, what's happening with the music, with the reggae industry in, in the country. So by so doing, you managed to get us together. I am Richard Siluma, Seki Sagila on stage. I'm going to be with you all the way. I thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I go to Mitrend? 
Uh, I, I know that. I hope there's furniture there, my leader, because <laughs> they say in <laughs> French, <laughs> there's no furniture. <laughs> so I hope you're sitting comfortable there. <laughs> Mr. Village, take it over, my leader. Yeah, uh, greeting everyone. Greeting Elder Richard, uh, Mr. Sakila Siluma. Um, this is Ability uh, from Fuse Africa Group. Um, I'd like to welcome you all, guys, and I hope we can have a nice engagement how to grow this industry. Okay, no, nice, nice one. Uh, Mr. Don Power, Rusty Rusty, apparently there, it's, it's dust all the way. How's, how's Rusty back there, my lord? Greetings, uh, Rasoli, and, and all the, the speakers and the viewers. Um, um, I'm looking forward for this engagement um, of how we can uplift reggae. Thank you, um, brother. Okay, well, uh, we also have Selector of Juggling. Why are you my leader? Can you, anyone see Selector of Juggling? Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What, what do you prefer, um, selector, selector or juggling? Yeah, or you? call me selector or, or juggling, man. Everything good. I'm great. You know? Yes, I will. Over uh, to no, you, thanks, my lord. Thanks, thank, thank, thanks for the opportunity and greetings to yeah. all the panelists. Uh, I'm selector or juggling. I'm the founder of Jam Music Productions and executive producer. Yeah, welcome, my leader. And Shota Z, where are you? We have our number one fan there, number mm -hmm. one reggae fan. Are you there? Are you there? Can you welcome yeah, your man. master's there? Yeah, man. Uh, Shota Z, Nchema, some know me as Easy. Uh, and I'm here, you know, for those difficult questions. We as, you know, reggae and dance world consumers in South Africa are frustrated about or... Uh, yeah, man, uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to the panel discussion. Welcome, everyone. Uh, on the panel, and then the massive watching from home or whatever they are watching from. Alut. Okay, well, thank you, thank you, massive. Thank you, massive. If you ever said me, Solima Lati, you all, you all know me. I always did fire uh, on social media about the state of the game. Uh, we don't know it all, but we try to do the movement. We love the, the game. I think today, what we're going to have a conversation about is. The what and how. I mean, it's important to know that what is happening, what happened, how can we, you know, improve, how can we go to the next level? Because we all know as reggae practitioners, as reggae fans, as promoters, as musicians, we all know things are not as, you know, things are not greener as we speak, as much as we eat the greens, but things are not greener. So we, we, we're going to have conversation and try to have uh, topics where we, we can talk and find out the issues. Because sometimes to you need to diagnose and find out what are the symptoms so that you can have a solution, you know. Probably maybe the solution is not something big, it's just under our nose, we don't see it. So our guests are there, mostly the guests will be talking. We, I won't be imposing, it will, it, it's a guest platform. So they'll be talking and having opinions about what they think we should happen. Because most of them are in reggae, they've been in reggae for longer, some longer than me, you know, as a reggae fan. So basically that's what we, uh, we're we going to be talking about. Uh, I think without wasting time, I'm interested especially, uh, Mr. Sagila, you've been there for years, for years, and you, you were there when reggae was, in South Africa was at another level. Uh, maybe you can you just take us through that that history, that journey to say what did you guys do right that we're not doing right? What have changed? Maybe start by giving us the history. Why, what did you what did you decide to say regains the way to go, Mr. Sakira? Over to you. Yeah, man. I give thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, to me, it happened at a time when I was involved in the industry very much. Actually, I was a salesman selling music in the mine stores and everywhere. And then I find that uh, the, the, the music that was selling the best was uh, uh, reggae music. And then I started following it up. And then out of, out of that, I find that I need to do reggae, but it hasn't been. It, might, it mustn't be a, a reggae from other countries. It must be something that as an element of South Africa. So it's how I started. And then by so doing, we reached the top easily because what happened everywhere where we go in, in the world, you'll find that they don't have what we were doing in South Africa. So that makes things very easy. Keep in mind that there are artists that we started with 
here in South Africa who were doing the Jamaican style and all those things. They couldn't move out of South Africa because they're doing what already is out there. We moved out because we were doing something that is on a side. Most of the time uh, we were like uh, getting this sort of saying, hey, this is not uh, uh, reggae, it's the bamba, you know, that way, you know. So, but anyhow, uh, at the end of the day, we came out at the top with the very same uh, style of reggae that people did not uh, believe it's a reggae. Mm. I, I think from when you started, uh, there's that history, you know, there's always say history doesn't have blank pages. There was that when you started you doing Baganga and then, uh, you know, combining it with reggae, probably maybe the the music audience band, the fab, fabric was different. Everyone loved music. It didn't matter what genre was it, so people would lose it. But we, what, what convinced you that South African people would listen to reggae. Like I said before I started reggae, I was already in the industry. But the thing okay. that really uh, boosted me a lot to follow reggae, it's that show that was done by uh, Mr. Jimmy Cliff in Soweto, Orlando Stadium. 19, oh, 1981, 1981, it was that, 81. Yeah, that show, yeah. yeah that, show, that show helped me a lot because it made me, when I was looking at them performing on stage, and then what, do we, what they, were, they were doing on stage, I could feel that with us, because we have nine cultures, when we do this, we'll do it better. And because of that, yes, we did. Because when we combine our dancing and all those things, we mix all the cultures that we have, even the singing, we did the same thing. So we came out of the top. That's, those are the um, uh, things that helped me a lot. And then uh, also, like, like, like I managed to get the t all the teams in place. First team it was the musician, which they needed a management. Second team it was the distribution. They also needed a very strong leading part. And then the third team it was the media. It, they also needed a, a link, right? all the radio station, all the television station. I was there. So without those things, you can't do anything on record. Like today, we can't get those things. That's why reggae is so tough today. Mm. Yeah. But by then, did you did you have an artist, or you just went and searched for an artist, or you just started with uh, uh, Elder Lucky Drew, or how did it come no, up? Or did you search with no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, I had lucky. I had lucky. Um, was mm -hmm. able to sing reggae, but who was mm -hmm. already into uh, uh, traditional music? I had Ruben okay. Biwa, who was also mm -hmm. able to sing reggae, but he was all into the spotlight story, Michael Jackson. And then the mm -hmm. two of them, when I approached them about reggae, and then they said, oh, sorry, buddy, we are already have our lines that we wanna do. And then in my brain, and then I said, okay, these two are the people that I believe in, they don't wanna do it. Let me make it a project. Mm -hmm. Being a project, and then I called them in and said, come guys, it's now a project, we can do it. And then they came running, and then it's how I got them back in. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> yes, yes. How is that? Yeah, and, and then, the, mm -hmm. and so when I started, yeah, when I started, all right, I actually wrote four songs, all right, and then um, the very first four songs that like I started with, they were actually for the project, pro project that I was doing, but and then I called them to sing both because Lucky and Ruben were able to do that, and then after singing. And then I, it's when I started collecting, okay, uh, uh, selecting and said, okay, I'll use this one for this and I'll use this one for this. And then it's how I got it going. And then they mm -hmm. couldn't say anything because they were young. Eh? Mm -hmm. And so I just got them in and uh, they discover when they were famous that we were doing something right. And we took it from there until uh, I ended up being in Jamaica, you know. Well, and then the South African audience, how, you know, the first time the music was played out in the radio station, how, how was the acceptance? Actually, um, um, there, were, there were two guys who started uh, this reggae for me from the radio station. It was Mr. Tusom Taong and Mr. Uh, Nzimande Potosa. And then those people, when I give them the signal, they listened to it, they started playing it. Luckily, um, those singers were, singles were so good. You know, and then the first play was recalled, and then after that we started getting everybody. Okay, okay. no, let's yeah. hold it there, uh, Mr. Ability. You, yeah, you've man. been in a you've been in a music business for a long time. 
uh, you know, in other genres you were looking, you were, I think you were with Gotoraf, if not mistaken, but you've been in music for a long time. Uh, how, how, how did you come about and decide to say, hey, or how, how did you, what, what interested you into reggae? Uh, to be honest with you, like I told you earlier on, um, I finished my metric 94, 95, I started uh, the music by Ubabu Richard Siloma, you know? Mm. So, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 95, it, it was him and Ubabu Mkize, uh, he passed away soon. Uh, so from there, I moved to Ghetto Rav. That time, scheme, I was just doing promotion. Um, it was Kim Varvas J, the biggest group that was there. Before about Odemir Spare, before about Tribe, before all these other guys, I even brought them from my respect. I think you remember Cream. I brought Cream. I brought mm -hmm. Ashan. Those are my boys, you know? So, but with reggae, staying in Newville, I was exposed to reggae by Tando. Just sit and admiral. Those are the guys that really, really, I end up became a friend with Admiral, I mean, with Jassit. Strange thing, when Jassit arrived in, in South Africa in 1996, I think 95 December, yeah, 95 mm -hmm. December 31st, it was a New Year Eve. If Rasta Teba was here, I was going to tell you. I remember that time, nobody knew Jassit. You know, we see this Rasta guy is coming to visit to Teba. We're like, hey, this Rasta guy, but who is he? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, the guy, I became a friend with him. I just like his style. I like the reggae and I was a friend with Junior. So I got closer, closer, closer to reggae and I fall in love with it. Wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. Mr. Selecta or Juggling, over to you, my leader. You and reggae, were you, did you start by selecting or how, how did it start? Just tell us, I'm fascinated. Eh? It comes from home, star. It comes from yes, home. Sir. My father was a huge, 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 big fan of reggae music. Um, um, at home, we are a musical family. I mean, I used to sing in the choir at church. I sang in the choir at school. Um, so, so music comes from home. You know, reggae itself comes from my father. My father played reggae and jazz. You know, I used to listen to the likes of Eric Donaldson. Uh, Benning's Beer, Culture, and all those um, all those artists. So um, I would say for me, it comes from home. It's in the blood. Mm, mm, mm. So, and, so, and, so obviously, further on with, mm -hmm. with my musical journey, I, I tried to do music at some point. I'm, when I was at school, I used to do music. And um, when I went to tertiary, that's when I started selecting. And, um, you know, fast forward a few years later, then I meet like-minded people who then convinced me to say, yo, man, like, let's do this thing um, as a business, you know? So, so my journey into the bigger reggae space started from an entrepreneurial point of view. Um, I've always looked at, you know, how do, we, how do we make money out of this thing? How do we turn this thing into a profitable business? So, so for the longest, uh, that's what I've been, um, um, I've been doing. Okay, I think there's someone who's playing a video in the background. If maybe you can try to mute it or switch it off, because I think there's that interference. I think it was me, my phone. I'm I'm also watching on Facebook with my phone. Yeah, but put it on it silent. Yeah, okay, okay, give them, uh, Mr. Uh, for juggling, and then you you started the business what was your first business which artist did you decide to say no i'm gonna work with this artist what made you work with that artist well the the, the first artist i worked with um in terms of management um was black Delinge. And I really did not want to do management. I was forced into management, to be very honest. Um, I started, I started a, a, um, a, a promotions company. Um, we started Jam Music as a promotions company. Um, our intention was to do events, promote the selector of uh, juggling brand via these events, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, obviously, in between all that, there's corporate, and you know, having to juggle between corporate and 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 the music itself. Um, then, um, uh, in fact, with the with with Black Dillinger, I was introduced by my partner at the time, Teto Chemes, uh, to Black Dillinger, um, and and Dillinger himself forced me to manage him. 
so 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 that's why our our relationship started um and i worked with yeah i worked with him uh i've worked with uh the likes of zeus um i mean artists that are outside of reggae uh ross jack worked with uh, tamasha uh and a few more you know um that are not in reggae um for push artists um to a point where i mean the the the, the album that we worked on for zeus was um a best male winner uh, in the channel or i can't remember what year it was 2013 um and 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 um uh the uh dillinger's um volcano erupt was uh, um a a channel o nominee as well so so throughout the years um, you know, that being pushed and pushed and pushed and eventually it became something that, look, I was like, you know, um, it's, it's handling somebody's um, bread, bread and butter, you know, so I had to start to focus on it and put a little bit more. Um, and look, many years later, we are here. Um, we've got a um, summer behind our name. And um, I think it's a huge feat, but um, we still need to have a long way to go in terms of, um, you know, how do we fully commercialize what we're doing? Because I believe that it's very, very um, viable from a commercial point of view. Let's hold it there. Uh, Ton Power, are you there, my lord? I'm here, King. Can, can, you, can you take us through your journey? I've known you as someone who does you know, reggae event in Rusty Bank. Just tell us more. What made you decide to say, no, this is the thing I want to do? Yeah, I think for me, um, reggae has been something that um, I had to learn myself. I mean, it was not there. My father was a policeman uh, under um, trucks and traffic kick. So reggae and cannabis, it used not to be in, inside of our home. So, but as a youth, when I was rising up, it's only music that used to calm me down when I'm trying to rebel and, and, and trying to, because uh, I had a lot of energy. So it is the only music that had to cool me down. And how I took it serious is when I went to the uh, varsity in, in Bloemfontein. Um, I, 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 I was at the organizing committee of uh, uh, the SRC. And the only element that I felt like I could fight for was, was reggae. And then from there, that's when I decided that I'm, I'm, I'm full-time on reggae. And, and here, when I came in, uh, uh, after school, after varsity, I checked around. I looked at Johannesburg. There's already a crowd of, of, of people who are doing reggae. And I wanted a place where I can centralize and start something from the scratch. And I came to Rustenberg and boom, uh, that was uh, a solid foundation for me. Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting. Uh, Shota Z, are you there? As a reggae fan, what makes you, I mean, there's hip hop, there's all those genres, there's gospel. You, you fit a gospel kind of a guy. What makes you decide to say, no, dance all reggae, this is my thing? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, you know, it started all in Brown Fontaine, you know, in my student days. Uh, I, I used to be a, a, a DJ. As you are saying, you know, hip hop, you know, most of us, you know, you know, black, you know, black boys coming to Joe, like hip hop was that, you know, genre that, you know, we fell in love with. So in my in those days, Brown Fontaine, you know, I, I, I was a DJ. There was this club called La Rumba. So at that club, you know, we used to have session from Thursday up until Sunday. You know, you know, if it's a recent DJ, you know, you have to be there. When guest DJ come, you know, you have to be there, like you are, you are there, part of the management. So and then I think most of you know that I Culture B. Uh, you know, he popped by one of these days. You know, asking to have a, a slot where you know he can pump his uh, reggae and dance hall, and then I think that from that moment, uh, it's when I started to develop that love. You know, hearing him, you know, run tunes and all those things, and then uh, well, he left after a while, and then because the massive had received that you know dance hall with that passion, we needed someone to continue you know playing that session, so I had to like sort of take over, and then you know. I bump those uh, dance hall shoes, you know, then. And then, yeah, from there, uh, obviously I retired from the from the juggling thing. Uh, but, you know, from there, that's when I started to develop, you know, that passion. And then when I started, you know, going out to reggae gigs, you know, uh, uh, to to Tandos and all those places. And then you start connecting, you know, you know, and the one thing that I like about reggae, 
uh, or dance hall scene, especially in Joburg back then. It was like one big family, you know. Uh, you know, you get to meet someone, and then from that day, you automatically becomes part of your life because you share rhythms, you know, you share gigs. When you go to gigs, almost it's the same, you know, sort of a cycle of people. And then also that thing encouraged me that, you know, this is a family away from home, you know, coming from Rastimbek and then being in Dobek. You, you know, you get into that uh, dance hall scene, realizing that, you know, everyone here is one love, is unity. And, you know, that also de I developed that love I had for, you know, for the, for reggae um, and uh, dance hall. I said. So, yeah, I think that, that's where it started, Ramfon thing in my student days. And then shout out Hacha B. I uh, hope he is watching, you know, you know, putting that fire in me. Okay. Give thanks there. Uh, you know, from everyone who has spoken, there's what, just one thing. I think everyone loves this music. But however, in any relationship, they say love is not enough. And we, we know the challenges in, in, in our gender. Hence, we have in this platform, we're having conversations, honest conversations. The important thing I would want to know from, you, from the guests is, you know, this, uh, what are the issues? Like, how, 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 how are we fitting and fitting this, uh, this case? Because, I mean, for past 20 years or 10 years, I think it's more than 20 years for most of us, uh, there hasn't been any, we haven't participated, you know, in the creative economy in terms of music commercial there might be a lot of reasons but just to hear from you uh the guest let, let's let, let's diagnose and and, and 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 try to find out what are the issues so what i'm trying to find out is in honestly what are the issues how how come our agenda is not you know at that level what are the issues what, what's your opinion in terms of what are the issues anyone better yeah, I think um, the, the, the serious problem is that um, we don't have the management that can really put their foot down on our artist. Like my brother here was uh, telling us how he managed uh, 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 our We need people like that because for me to be able to get the mileage out of uh, the reggae music, it was the management that I had. It was very strong. So if we could all have managers for groups and then we'll be able to get some way okay uh i think ability did you manage to mute the the video yeah. there yes i did i did it okay is, uh, airplay yeah okay um, uh okay can you take it over the ability yeah what are the issues what do you think are the issues there the growth of the industry it won't be. It won't only happen when the when the artist gets a manager, because at the end of the day, you can have a manager, but if you don't have a proper structure, a proper record label, a proper marketing, a proper promotion behind you, then before you even go, that's why I have a problem. You go to the studio. As an artist, I don't care if you are a reggae, you are a jazz, you are a hip hop, you are a quieto. You go to the studio, you got a team behind you. You can hear this thing. It's when I used to work for a record label, there was a time when you would say the song is a radio friendly song, it's not a hit. And then there's a time when you walk into the studio, you can just tell that this is a hit, you know. So you come out from the studio with a project, you master, you mix, you master, and you say it's going to sell. But you can hear there is no heat on the project. So how then you can justify that your manager can try to make you an artist that can sell and the artist that can get a, rare, a fair rate of airplay if your material at the studio was not good? It wasn't mixed properly. It wasn't uh, mastered properly. It wasn't recorded properly. You as an artist, you, you can't even um, try to lay down the track in the way that one can say, this is an artist. 
you know. I think so it, just it let, let me come in. Let, let me come in there. I think there's still someone who's uh, playing a live video. Can you try to mute there? It's just giving a feedback. Um, I switch off my phone, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So what I can say, Babu Slomo, is this. The, 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 the South African reggae industry suffered a setback after 1994, when the South African government decided not to unbend the reggae music. Because what happened is, is if you remember, even like Kit Dube, they were playing his music, some of his songs, they were not getting played. But when we got this freedom, there is no one from the government, from the radio side, who say this genre must get a fair airplay. So we don't get a fair airplay. So how you justify that the record label can invest on the artist when they know that the music that the artist is recording is not going to get airplay? Yeah, and uh, while you're there, I thank you so much because our radio stations, those we believe that they, are, they have the power, they are playing our music at 2 o'clock in the morning when people are fast asleep. There's That's it. a problem, I think. There's it. There's it. So now I'm going to go mm. back to Soli and yeah, say uh, it starts so with artists. Once the artist can convince the record executive, because the executive, I'm not going to spend 300,000 taking you to the studio to record live. I'm not talking about sampling and everything. To go and record live, you need about between 150 to 300,000. Then you think that that record boss is not going to push for you to get a radio airplay. But now, when you, you listen to some of these reggae, you know some of these reggae artists, when you try to tell them, they say you think you know too much, then you'll be, get, you'll be cast on Facebook. You'll be insulted on Facebook. Just because you're trying to say, not because you hate a person, but you're trying to tell them that, look, I've been in this game for far too long. And I think for you to be successful, we are very good, but for you to be successful, if you can change and do A, B, C, and D, you will get cast. But if I can take the same project of the same artist and go to Warner Music or Universal Music and say, guys, I got this project. Can you assist me to take it to the market? They listen to it, then they say, hey, this thing is killing even our ears. What's a problem here? Mm -hmm. uh, Selector or Jacqueline, as someone who's been in the journey uh, with, with Black Danger, how, how has it been? What is your word? What are the issues? What are you finding to be the issues in, in the industry? Look, I think um, there's a couple of um, things. Uh, firstly, um, the likes of uh, Sakisa Gila, we've had a disconnect from that generation to this generation. So a lot of us have not had guidance. We've not had people that told us, you know, this is how to do things. So we just basically learned along the way. And I strongly believe that today, so historically we can say the suppression of reggae was um, uh, because of other people. Today, I don't believe that the suppression of reggae is due to somebody else. I believe it's due to ourselves. If, if anybody believes that reggae is suppressed today um, uh, by anybody, I think there are there's many avenues that show that we can do it. You know, you nobody controls social media. If you've got a budget to flood your stuff on social media, um, nobody can control it. Um, if you've got a flat budget to, to flood yourself on the, on the streets, um, nobody can stop you. So I understand in terms of, yes, there's powers that control the radios, etc. cetera. But um, what I don't like to do is to look outside. I first look at myself, um, like AB is saying, you know, we need, to, we need to formalize ourselves. We need to, when we're doing something, ask ourselves some very hard questions because I, I believe um, that the reggae is not honest. I think we're not honest and that's why we allow a lot of whiteness. You know, um, to, today anybody can come into the space and claim the space and claim to be whatever they wanna be. Do you understand what I'm saying? Due to lack of honesty, do you understand? So we need to be honest. We need to say we're not formalized enough. 
there are certain things that we need. We need to be having certain conversations at different levels, from an artist level, from those that deal with things in studio, from a production point of view, engineering, et cetera, et cetera, um, to management, to uh, promotions, to, to the labels themselves, because there are many ways to get out there. I strongly yeah. believe that um, in terms of uh, uh, um, us not being able to make, because we have the same problems as everyone else. So firstly, we need to, we need to understand that reggae problems are not unique to reggae. There is a boy next door who wants to make it, who's doing hip hop, who's doing white, right? They're facing the same challenges. I, I, I believe in my journey, I've seen the rise of Kwaito from some bubblegum music, some, they don't, you know, they don't think, hey, this music is what, what, to Kwaito being the biggest thing. Hip hop being, hey, hey, album rapper, to be the biggest thing. So we need to be those people to, who will say, you know what, uh, it's a family show, right? Mm -hmm. It's a financial. So, 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 you know, let's leave whatever, whoever is, uh, whatever uh, uh, everybody's saying. What do we need to do? And that's why these conversations are key. And and in these conversations, we need to be honest. We need to tell each other, yo, juggly, there you're messing up. There you're messing up. I can't, I, that's how I grow. That's how I grow. But because we don't tell each other these things, um, and, 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 you know, we, we sugarcoating things, you know, uh, yes, I, uh, yes, I, uh. we're not going to go anywhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? And, and I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> let's hold it off there. Let's give uh, Don Power uh, a chance as well. Uh, Don Power, can you also have your peace, my Lord? I think you've muted, you've muted your, okay. Don Power, can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, yeah can I can you, hear you. Okay. Yes, sir. Over to you. Look, I think for me, um, I would say the South African reggae industry is still doing well. It's not bad as such, but I think at some stage we have lost the formula um, when we how on how we exhibit our music. For example, uh, on all our shows, we had we. I, I think I'm one of the uh, person who also got into that trap. We we used to say strictly a reggae and dance hall. Whenever we put up a show, we say strictly reggae and dance hall. And then I was like, um, yes, it sounds good and, and it, it is something that we are focusing on. But now the challenge is when I try to do in this case, I think Elder uh, Richie can also uh, 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 guide me on that. On the days of the Like You Do, I mean, you will see on his visuals when he was on a stadium, stadium fully packed, you would assume that it was strictly reggae. No, it was not. It was various artists put together in one venue. But now, anytime when Lucky comes and perform, because reggae is special and it's good music, everyone used to love it. And that's how he got uh, so much traction into the, the general community. So our own, we are saying we have to do strictly reggae. So we are doing, we are only focusing on our minimum people that we are having already, small crew that we are having, which is the Rastas, which is the few reggae people and reggae, by nature and by far, it is not Rasta or reggae, eh, 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 reggae loving people. It is for the community. So my take would be on the festivals. What we do, we need to stop these things of only putting up a reggae acts altogether, whether it's funded event or it is not funded event. Um, because for me, I've tried it for almost ten years now. I put up some of the best shows, you know, in terms of exhibitions. I mean, most of the artists who have came to my show, they will tell you that it was more of international level shows. But I've never really made any innings on it because only it was only focused on the few massive of reggae that we're having. I like when I ha had put in maybe one of the main ex genius, you know, like hip hop or, or quieto or anything, and I do 50% those, and then I do 50% reggae. That means the influence that we'll have, uh, uh, it will be so much that those people who are came in there to watch Casper Nevers, for example, um, uh, Kabza, the small on Amapian. 50% or 10% of them, they'll be addicted to reggae. And then we call our number. So I think the main problem is we have shifted from the way how these things work, both in international and all the other genres. Because even hip hop, they don't do strictly hip hop. They'll have different uh, artists. Even uh, quieto, they don't do strictly, but they'll have hip hop, they'll have this. 
it's only us on reggae we are saying strictly this and it is narrowing us we are not going anywhere with it i think that is the yeah. main, main 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 problem <laughs> just just to come just to come in there i mean at, at, at some point historically there was times where you would have uh, elder let's say one artist would complain to say who, who was it who's the the the, the poet that is uh, would, yeah would complain to say sabc is paying a, a lot of like dube so it means at some point we had access at some point we had that media access but what i'm not trying what i'm not getting what flip what change because i don't think it would drastically change and then reggae is not uh, played i mean even it was played post 94 i mean uh, we used to watch uh, reggae shows on on tv i mean it used to be played so something happened i think that's what not that's what i'm not getting because that's what i'm trying to find out. what really happened ability unmute unmute there your mic ability we can't hear you. You know, what, well, you know what was a problem? We we didn't have a we didn't develop or we didn't have a new artist who were coming up. Like when Lucky Dube passed away, we didn't have another artist that you could compare to Lucky Dube. It was like for a couple of years we didn't have an artist until we started the new generation of about Black Delinja, uh, you can name now about Botanis, about Bongo Riot. Before we used to have about Sipo Johnson, we used to have about uh, Rasta Senzo, you know. So that era they didn't groom a new generation to take over from them, you understand. So mm -hmm. when we didn't have that new generation, because now the record company, they started to feel that the reggae is not selling because there was no new artists who were entering the system. Because if you look at it, um, which other artists came? I mean, 1994, I think you will talk about Abo, Abo Sipo Johnson, you will talk about Abo Angola Maseko, you will talk about Abo uh, Utaini, China, and, yeah. you know about time, but you, you have to understand Utaini as well is a relative Gababu Silum. First mm -hmm. album Gataini, Yayenzo Abo Alexis Fago, that, that was there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, yeah. were recording that, you know. I was in Suriname, uh, not Suriname, I was in uh, Australia with Abo, Abo Tutuani Tuel. People in Australia, they were asking us about who? Ubabu Richard Silumo. They were asking us about Oyaba. They were asking us about, like, not like it to be a slave. You know how yeah. big slave in Europe? You know how big is slave in Australia? You know mm. how big Lobaba, lo Ubabu Silumo? In Suriname and Holland, even today, Franz Pinas, they will tell you, they think that he's the, he's the one who, who, who was always we do like it do and i was telling them that no he was a producer of like it do they say no but there's this guy richard siluma i'm saying that was a producer so until today <laughs> in in holland and suriname they want oh, richard siluma they want the oyaba they want his, his, his slaves but do we have a new generation we don't we i was one. living in holland when i was living in holland you know how big is black delinja is no one know. I didn't know the guy. I was in Belgium when a friend of mine told me Uwe Pantin say, I want you to meet Uwe Pantin. He's working with this South, South African guy from Cape Town. I'm like, I don't know who's this guy. Everybody's talking about Dilinja. He was coming from Summer Jam that time. You know, <laughs> when I was with Uwe Pantin, then he told me, say, this guy, man, he's so good. He's from Cape Town, Black Dilinja. Until I came back to South Africa, I met Dilinja the first time in Newville. And when I met him, I was like, what are you doing in South Africa? Because they don't appreciate reggae and I know what is happening with reggae in Europe. What are you doing back here? He said, no, I came back home. But to cut the story short, I think uh, Selector or Juggling, he has put it right. Let's look outside of the South Africa. If you look now, everything is on, is on, uh, is, is on, the, is on digital. Digital streaming. How many digital companies are out there? 
let's focus on that because you will hit the the door of SABC and they will never open it. My apologies, you're misquoting me, Abby. I didn't say look outside South Africa. No, no, no. I'm saying you say look <laughs> at the digital. I mean, on the other. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just mean, I just mean that it's it's in our heads. Do you understand? Yeah. So, yeah, so, no, so as a, as a, as an as an artist. As an artist today, I can tell you nobody's willing to go and stand in the street corner and sell their music, but they'll rather stay hungry in their own houses. So yeah. we can't come blame somebody else for that. We need to look at ourselves as a business, like a pick and pay, Wamam Kizi, Amakenzi, wherever. We we'll wake up every day to say we've got a product or a service to sell. We've got something to sell. How do we sell this? So from an artist, manager, the whole chain. We need to have that mindset. All of us need to understand that we are, we are a business. The mindset that we need to have is to say, if they, if, if they close the door at your home, they say you can't come in here. It's like they are saying you're not welcome because that's what SABC is doing. How many times have we been writing petitions to SABC? If we can't get an airplay, you, the artist can't grow. Why hip hop is growing? Why I'm a piano is growing? It's because they are getting airplay. When they're getting airplay, they become popular. Uh, Don Power, can you come back there as someone who who is an artist as well? Yeah, look, uh, for me, really, it is um, the the this connection. The artist, when when you have to send the, the the media play, the people want the first thing they check, they check your streaming. How how much is your music streamed? And how much traction are you having on the crowd, on the people? How much is your social and uh, media doing? Which uh, I think Elder Richie said it well. He says he had uh, uh, the PR, he had the marketing team, and all those things put up a package that whenever we we send, because SABC they want they need they want numbers. So whenever they want to play us, they want to check how much numbers can this specific artist or can this specific music bring to our our our, our station. So I think. That disconnection of us only focusing on our na few numbers of, of reggae, then the general community, it is the one that is really uh, 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 hindering us from progress. Okay. So what was the difficulty for us to reach out outside the borders? Let's say within the continent. Uh, are we struggling to get to Kenya, to other uh, countries within the continent? And especially our, our, our new... No, no, not really. Especially our new artists. Because yes. if, if you go to other... They still know uh, your elder Richard, like it uh, like it band, but nobody knows all our upcoming artists. But how are we not uh, infiltrating within the continent? I mean, we know South Africa in terms of music. We've always had an upper hand in terms of infiltrating... Uh, taking our music within uh, within the continent. Look, I think from my perspective, uh, um, it is the issue of the airplay, which is main contributor because how the music grows, uh, how you get known to the outside world. First, they need to know your impact in the specific country that you are. If if they can see the numbers that we are, like Shatterwell, I'm going to make the example with Shatterwell or Stone Boy. They got very popular in their in their country. Whenever they do a stream or anything. There's numbers that are built towards them. And then when you go outside, whenever you are solely dense I had before your dance are So I think if we can get more popular and have the whole nation behind reggae, like how it used to be when uh, 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 we used to fill up the stadium or, or make the whole stadium rock in the days of Lucky TV, before now it's now fashionable because Bokas Universe they are trying to do it. But if we can start to get into those images that the whole nation is behind reggae, I think we will be able to reach out of the border. Simple, Zimbabwe, our neighboring country. Whenever they do, they do their things, those guys. I have maximum respect for them. Whatever they are doing inside their country, they get huge following. And then it's easy for them to reach out of the borders because then everyone can see that this is the, the gurus in their countries. So I think that's what we need to uh, take a, a direction. Don, Don Power, can I say uh, something? But you must remember how Zimbabwe grow their music. Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe grow their music after Mugabe suspended all the music that coming from outside of the country. That's how they grow this Zim Denso. In South Africa, you can't say that because they they they, they are industries that are protected. 
They are interests that are protected. They are protecting about Warner. They are protecting about Sony. They are protecting about Allo. So you can't do that. In Zimbabwe, they shut down everything. Hence, if you can understand which, when that popular uprising started to grow the, 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 the artists or, and the music and the culture of Zimbabwe, it was after they suspended everything that coming outside of Zimbabwe. They promoting their own. In South Africa, you can't do that. Mr. Sluma, can, yeah, can, can, yes. can, can I give Mr. Sluma, then I'll come to you, Shotazi? Okay. Yes, um, I thank you so much. Um, actually, I was, I, I've, I've been listening as we're talking here and then um, taking some points here and there. I think uh, the main thing that we still need to tie up is the management of the artist, because you can find a nice artist out there, but without a management, that artist is nobody. All right. And then same thing happened to number of artists that I managed. They became a good artist because I managed them. All right. Uh, obvious I was managing them when I was still under a certain label, a big label is Gala. But after being, Gala, uh, being out of Gala, I couldn't do that because I had any, a lot of enemies who were trying to do better than me. So and then I dropped that. But I still believe that uh, I, everything that you guys are saying they're still dynamo the the matter of things just to put our heads down and do it especially with the media now that we have now we shouldn't be complaining at all all right i i'm still a reggae artist though i wouldn't be like lucky to it but i really get my share outside the, the, the south african uh, territories because the other people value me out there i'm really living a better life out of that so but here at home we still can do that our uh, 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 ma uh, promoters they always look uh, uh, down on us as they did on Lucky Two, where they did not look on Lucky Two as an as the uh, to artists to be compiled in festival. But what I then did, I decided to put him on a road, and then they find that they were not compiling him, but he was always on the road. He was performing the in every corners of South Africa, and then they were forced to put him on. If we could do the very same thing again, have our reggae artist around South Africa performing, and then they will come back to us. That's the only way. I thank you so much. Uh, Shotazi, can you come through? Okay, yeah, I wanted to actually expand on what Vampire said earlier, you know, about, you know, trying to, you know, look outside, not just, you know, within the reggae space, try to, you know, piggyback on other genres. Because, you know, I was just thinking, you know, uh, how the Niger music, you know, came into South Africa. You know, before 2010, Niger music was, was not as huge as it is today in South Africa. So what the Nigerian guys did, they were already big in Nigeria, they were big in the States, but not in South Africa. So they wanted to zoom in into the South African market. So what they asked themselves, how can we do this? So they came in and said, what's hot in South Africa at the moment, you know, around the 2010, 2011. Then, you know, AKA was one of those guys, hip hop guys who was carrying, you know, that hip hop and music commercial in South Africa. And then the Nigerian guys started, you know, doing features, feature verses on AKA and other, you know, hip hop artists. And then with that, that's how they introduced themselves into the South African audience. Although they were huge, they were bigger than AKA elsewhere. You know, they were bigger. The numbers that they had in Nigeria, you know, you know, AKA just a dark, you know, compared to that. But they also they knew that we, in order to penetrate South Africa, we need something that's hot in South Africa. So I think, you know, this reggae industry, reggae artists, I mean, when they start to look, to start looking into that, how can we, you know, make ourselves popular? How can we make ourselves played on Metro FM or Ukozi FM? Ukozi FM plays a lot of uh, uh, Maskandi music, you know. I mean, it, it, it won't be, a, 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 it will be something actually creative, something good for a reggae artist or dancehall artist to say, why can I ask one of the Maskandi guys to give me a test on one of his albums? Because we know that song is going to get played on, on Ukozi FM. We know that I is popular in case of that. And then uh, just by being featured on that, my music is going to get into Ukuzi FM. They look at hip hop. Kaspar Nyoves is one of the biggest guys. How, you know, as, 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 as a South African reggae artist or dancehall artist, why can I speak with Kaspar? Doesn't necessarily have to be Kaspar, it can be one of the up and coming guys in, 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 music, in, I mean, in, in hip hop. Like a young can I, kid. Yeah. Can I support my, my leader. 
Yeah. Can I support you on that uh, uh, Zulu traditional album, uh, choir, music that is playing in Devon, all right? Yeah. Every artist has a reggae track because I am the source of the traditional music in Natal. Every, uh, every artist has a reggae track. Listen to them from today, you'll see. Mm -hmm. I know, that's true. And then uh, the last, uh, last thing, so, and then I think, you know, as a South African artist, you need to start looking at that, uh, you know, why can't we get features in a uh, hip hop artist? Why can't we get features on, on Ama Piano? I mean, you don't be, I mean, in, in the nineties, we had quite a, we had a, a lot of uh, dancehall artists within the group. You know, about Kewa Shumba, about Jassi. You know, why can it be done now so that the, the reggae music, so that our Momo Dread, our, 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 our band part, you know, our Pepsi and all of these guys can get into Metro FM. That's the only way from how I look at it to get into radio. Make sure that you are part of the, of the, of the, of the bigger music, not just reggae. You know, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's it. We, we also uh, have questions. Yeah, let me. We also have questions uh, from our uh, on our on my wall on Facebook. Also, chat if you wanna answer any of those. Uh, you can you can, uh, you can answer. Uh, you you welcome to answer any of the questions. But yeah, over to you. Um. So so th there's there's multifaceted um approach to 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 a solution to this. You know um. There's a lot of things that are coming up. Um, for me, uh, practical steps, practical steps is we need to be dealing with it from the grassroots, which is where the music comes from. There's, that's one part. Um, there is how the music gets out there. That's another part. Everyone at those different levels needs to be speaking and understanding each other and helping each other to say, how do we um, really conquer this? Because if you look at um, the notion of, you know, somebody was already big or you need numbers to get to a certain, how do you get those numbers? You need to build those numbers somewhere. You need to get those numbers somewhere. As I made the example earlier, practical things, how many artists today or even record labels uh, in, because we're independent, we're independent, so we can't compare ourselves to the um, to the to the multinationals. How many of us wake up every day, and each and every person we meet, we introduce ourselves and say, "I'm so and so. Uh, this is what I do, and this is my album. Would you like to support? I sell my album under trade. And tell me in a week how many albums we'll sell, because when you talk numbers, there are people that are selling numbers and not publicizing it. There are people that are selling thousands of copies and not publicizing it. They're eating nicely, quietly, because it's working for them. They don't need to, uh, uh, um, to be, you know, uh, hyping on Facebook and whatever because they're making cash. And this is what it boils down to. How do you make the dollar? How do you make the rent? Do you understand? So so, so that's what we need, to, we need to start. And the other thing is, as you said, A.B., there's nothing for me to sell. If you don't have a hit song, I can't sell. I mean, really, come on, man. You know, I need to be selling hits. I need to be selling stuff that when I go to radio, when I speak to somebody, someone must just tell me, yo, this is very good for radio. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll give you an example. I mean, we've got a, we've got a song like Jungle. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an anthem. You understand? It's become a, a, a soundtrack, but... We didn't force that song down people's throats. I'll give you another example, Sister Bettina. When that song came out, I'm sorry to say I hated that song. I did not like that song because I just thought this is the biggest nonsense I've ever heard. But do you know what? That very same year, um, when we had a year at function at work, I was dancing to that song. I was vibing to it because why? It was shoved down my throat so much that I had to eat. So we need to find ways to say, how do we shove reggae down people's not the same people not the same friends that would argue with and debate with on the socials every single day we're not selling we're not breaking any mold in the end that we just you know it's it's just friends we are the same friends like shata z said earlier when you go to one dance it's the same people you go to the next dance it's the same people we're not doing anything 
Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So, so we, we need, know, we, we know, need, we know it, we know it all. <laughs> exactly. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? So, hit song, hit the streets, hit the socials. Everybody else out there will listen. Us as independents, we need to be looking for um, uh, uh, deals with the majors to partner with the majors to say, look, I've got a product. You understand? Can you help me get it out there? Because you don't need to sign to the to the major. The major you can partner with the major on a project. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so there's a lot of things that we need to do practically. And really, for me, once you look at somebody else, once you blame somebody else, that is the biggest failure. That is our number one failure. As soon as we look at ourselves and say, within our power, how do I turn this one red into a thousand red? Then we'll, we'll start getting somewhere. But as soon as I think, hey, I so and so, even in war, star, even in war, there is someone that's making money. You choose to be on which side of the war. Just to come the selector juggling, in terms of audience, who do we sing to? Are well, what we, do you are mean? We, who do we sing to? Yeah, are we relevant to the? I'm talking about the massive South African audience. Do we have an audience, or we only sing to us? Do we? Are we? The the the, the, the audience is bigger than you think. You mm-hmm. It's the so big. The, the the audience is there. We just don't give them what they want. Mm-hmm. The audience is there because every time when we go to studio, we're thinking of uh, Richard Siluma, Don Power, mm-hmm. Ability. I'm thinking of Shota Z. I'm not thinking mm-hmm. of your man. There could be a guy called Osmik out there. No, mm-hmm. you know what? There could be Usi called Usindi out there. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That likes this. And we know them. They spend. They spend. These are not people that you, you they're gonna come to your thing and go with, with nothing. They're gonna pay to come to your event and they want merchandise when they come to your event. They want a CD, they'll ask you, what else do you have? Do you have a t-shirt? Do you have a cap? Mm-hmm. Do you have, what else do you have? Do you understand what I'm saying? So we're not targeting the right people. We 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 busy coming to the same circle and uh, excited when we see 100, 200, 300 likes from the same people. Mm. You understand? Because that's what we do. Ability to come. That's, that's what we do. Um, you, you know, the uh, I just want to go to the questions that uh, I see on your wall. Uh, uh, my brother um, just mention question from who and then we take it uh let me just i have to put on my phone because i put it off okay uh, just a second sorry. Uh, sorry. Okay. and any of the guests can answer any questions on my hall as well just check Okay, um, uh, education clashes during the video show comments, there's a gatekeepers. Curious, uh, no, there is a one I wanted to, why I want to respond to this, because I see it's coming from, one is coming from Tandega, and the same question is coming from Tuli Tools. Okay, now, we know that, um, with Rige, you can't get you can't get a sponsor, corporate sponsors. Mm. Let me talk for me. I do. I did a job at Rige Splash. I got money from the government. You know, that money I'm accountable for each and every cent. They want an invoice for that money. They want um, a proof of payment. They want an agreement for that for that money. So there is no way that one you can abuse that money because at the end of the day you are accountable for each and every cent that they are giving you, okay? So now, I will tell you now, I don't know how you can abuse the government money, but for my show, those who came to my show to see my show, I tried to put the best show I could, you know? And I paid each and every artist that play on my show. I don't owe any artist any money anyone who told me i want x amount i paid him the x amount that he wanted okay That's there's a quick there's, there's another question from i think this is interesting from lion, lion Poe international uh lion Poe says uh during his show one of the chats was that uh reggae should stop being gatekept as a reggae music 
Oh, I was still. I was How? What's 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 your okay. what's what's your take on that? I was still carrying on. You know, I I saw that one from Lauren Paul. Um, the the issue of reggae is this: people they tend to they don't want to see themselves growing to the mainstream. That you are a reggae artist or a raster, you don't need to bottle yourself. We got a boy uh, that I brought on my show from Malawi, what's his name, uh, Gemini Major. That boy is a reggae dancer boy, but he have to cross over between dancehall and hip hop so that he can go to mainstream. There was a time when Bongo Riot did the same thing as well. So people, they don't want to collaborate. There is no unity among the artists themselves. Why people hate Black Dillinger so much? Why you can't see Black Dillinger not as your competition, but as your brother that can make you go somewhere? Why people don't like the fact that Bongo Riot is nominated? Why people can't support the, 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 the maximum style that out of, 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 of hard work they've done, they've been nominated for summers because that will grow the industry. Why there's so much hate in the industry? There's so much hate in the industry that when you post something on Facebook, you will see you will be attacked that you're not a rasta. I'm not, you know what? I'm a reggae lover. I'm not a rasta. I'm a reggae lover. Hate me or like me. And with reggae, I know so much that some of the reggae artists don't, don't, they don't even know. I've traveled countries that they would dream to be there. I've been with the artists that they can't be with them. Right now, I was showing you yesterday, Soli, Spraka Benz. I'm talking to Spraka Benz. You know, I, I got contract from VP Record. I got a contract from Zodjak, but I don't have an artist I can work with. And I'm looking at these boys insulting me on Facebook. It's like, what did I do wrong to deserve all this insult? Can I answer that one, uh, Soli? Okay. The, 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 the gatekeepers who are okay. Rasta. There is no gatekeeper who's Rasta. Mm -hmm. I, I think maybe what 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 he's what? trying to say is say why is the music? It's more like it's a rasta music. It's not for everyone. I think that's what but, he's trying to ask. But 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 that's that's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. There is there is AB here. AB here, big promoter of reggae music. He's not a rasta. Mm -hmm. He's not a gatekeeper. And AB, for, for me, I don't entertain whatever people say on social media. I can tell you that because they don't fund me. They don't help me when I'm in trouble. So I don't entertain. I don't care what they say until somebody comes and say, yo, star, I see you're struggling here. I think we need to help you here and then, 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 then. Then they can contribute into what comes out on the other side. But until, until, uh, 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 but, but, but in the meantime, I don't, I don't entertain. I don't entertain. And because I've got standards myself, I will make sure that everything that comes from jam music productions is top class. At least meets certain levels. Do you understand? Yes, we're not perfect. Um, we, 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 we won't be the best every time, uh, but I will do my level best to say anything that represents me, that's got my name in it must be of a certain standard, must bridge, uh, must cross certain bridges, must uh, break barriers in certain ways. You know, we need to be talking about when we put products out, we, you know, congratulations, uh, Dot, on the three nominations. That's not an easy feat. That, that, is, that is big, Star, like that is big. And, and it's not some tin pan categories. You know, it's best album, best male. Those are big. Do you understand? So, 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 you've put in the work. You know, you've put in the work, and 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 the next thing you need to look at how do you make sure that once we have a top something on iTunes, that album be a top something on iTunes. 
on iTunes? When do we have a uh, one of our albums being in the billboards, in the top 100, top 50, top 10 of billboards? That's what we need to aspire to. Do you understand? In the country, in a certain month, when 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 we look there and see which are the best selling albums how do we make sure that our albums are selling there and it starts at the roots it starts at the roots it starts with that one that you would have sold that you undermined because the guy on the street you might think he doesn't have money and he's the one who actually has the money to pay for your album so we need not to undermine any person. Every single person is valuable to us and we need to make sure that they know us and we respect them with what we give them. You just mentioned something about standard. I'm assuming you're talking about standard quality. Yes, yes, What is, yes, what, yes, what is, yes, what is your take? Yes. Where, where are we? Are we, you know, if you look at that... Uh, out of 10, where are we and what do we need to do to improve the standard? No, I think we're growing. Uh, I mm -hmm. think we're growing. Um, uh, look, as much as there's, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, we are saying, how do we monetize, how do we commercialize really mm -hmm. what we're doing? We, we, there's steps in the right direction. You know, we can now talk about there are these albums in Zanze Reggae that were released this year. Whereas three, four years ago, we didn't have that. Now, every year we look forward to certain albums being released. And these albums, we know now that at least they are meeting a certain standard. So standard for me is, 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 is you know, it, they have to be quality. The mixing must be right, the mastering must be right. Um, uh, second, well, firstly, they must be great songs. They must have good songs, you know? Um, and good songs, what are good songs? There must be hit songs. Um, there must be songs that are radio friendly. There must be songs for the girls, you know? There must be songs for everybody, you know? Um, and then obviously then the, the mixing, the packaging, etc., must be solid. So I must be able to slot in your music and just, and not cringe when I'm sitting with certain people. You understand to say people are gonna like, hey, what is this one listening to? You understand what I'm saying? I must be happy. I must. I must actually want to open it and and blast it loud so that even the neighbors can come and 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 ask me what am I listening to instead of coming to complain. Okay. I think earlier you mentioned something about uh, it's easier for anyone to come in and then claim the space, even if they are awake. As, as people who've been there as fans, as, as, as record labels, as promoters, if we see such, what would be the best approach? Because we could see that this thing, it's not gonna improve or develop uh, the gender. What is the best way? Uh, well, because there is no, there, there, there's no, central place where things are coming through you understand so so we don't have bodies where you know we're able to discuss and say no but this doesn't meet the criteria no this meets the criteria etc so whoever has a product they go bypass everybody and they get to a certain point somebody mentioned uh metro fm for example get to metro fm and metro fm feels like your bunch like really now you understand so there is no uh what's the word i'm looking for there's there's no there's no verification there's no yeah there's there's no there's no body because <laughs> what we need to what we need to be doing is now we've got labels right now whatever comes out of your label needs to be of a certain standard period now if i don't have a label i can release today on my own and I'm not accountable to anybody from a quality standard, etc. Entertainment, no entertainment value. I can release and go to wherever I wanna go um, uh, uh, um, and say, no, this is reggae. When somebody else comes uh, after me, they, 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 they've, they've seen, the person that I met has seen the worst of reggae 
mm-hmm. and then the next mm-hmm. person has to get you know when as soon as they ask they say no it's reggae they tell you no no ready the reggae is sunday night not today mm-hmm. don power can you can you have a say there Yeah, I think for 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 just to answer the question that I've uh, been asked, the one for Lamin for. I think um like I've, I've been saying look at in Jamaica, I'm just going to make a typical example in Jamaica. There is uh, this year's show which is the Jamaican Summer Fest. What happened on that festival uh, previously before it gets to this level? They used to uh, bring Abo Beyoncé, they used to bring Abo Jay-Z, they used to bring Abo Snoop Doggy Dogg. and then they build up all the the, the 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 clientele and it's only two or three years back um and imagine this is in jamaica the center of reggae where they had you fusing other big acts from outside and then and then only few years back i think three years because i was speaking to uh, one of the guys who's coordinating there that's when they started uh, uh, nurturing it into a reggae but now what they did they included general music for general community which i think and personally for me that's a decision that I've already taken I'm never going to do any reggae strictly reggae show to say I'm doing a strictly reggae. I've never I've done it for more than 15 years it just never worked out I've done my checks and balance I've, I've put up the best production on my shows I've put up the best lineup strictly reggae and dance on but it has never worked so for now I've made a resolution that I'm never putting up any show without putting up other genres so I think for us the, the gatekeeping is basically we are saying strictly reggae and the other thing we are saying Reggae and dance all it's a mission not a competition. Reggae it must be competitive. It can never be progressive if it's not competitive. So we are saying reggae is a mission, yes it's a mission, but any genre, any art has to be competitive, competition so that any any artist can be on that uh, um competitive level that we know who's the best, who's the second and then that will answer the question of what is that not everyone can just occupy the space because we will know that who's the best and the numbers and the, the traction of the people who always say i think that's what i, I could say in, in regards of the gatekeeping let's just okay. diversify and have everything everyone on board okay from the conversation what I've, i've i've just noticed the pillars that we need to follow i think we 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 need to i think what what uh, one of the guests mentioned was maybe we might need to look at if we don't have an audience on access within the country we might need to look outside I think that's one. And then the second one was a uh, collaboration. So on on those two points I'm trying to find from the guests if we have to look outside what would be the steps that we need as an I'm an I'm an artist I'm an up and coming or I've been there trying my best but nothing is moving. What do I need to do to look outside? I think that, that let's 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 try to discuss that one first. and then we'll come back with the collaborations because we we've dealt with the what so we need, we need to go to the how how do we move from where we are we taking this curve upwards so ability can you come through and i'm mute there okay yeah um you know when when franz pinas was here in south africa i've introduced him to uh pepsin you know So this year we were working on trying to bring to take Pepsin's artist to Europe which um France is a booker for biggest festival in Holland it's called Kwaku Festival um and then Uwe Bantin you know Uwe is based in Germany so he got couple of promoters mm-hmm. that he's been talking to so that collaboration it's needed but you can't just collaborate with somebody who doesn't know you who doesn't know what you do what you've done uh, how good you are can you bring a return of investment if a person buy you a flight ticket flight and accommodate you in Europe can he make anything out of that can he make his money back that he invested on you you know so we need to look at those things then in terms of trying to export our own artists outside of the country but they also before you export somebody outside of south africa you need his music to be outside there you can't go to the country where they don't even know your songs it's really difficult so that's when the digital uh streaming 
uh, it's needed. Artists need to start looking for international digital distribution so that when you start looking for shows outside of the country, people know who you are. They know your songs because the promoter is difficult for him to invest on booking you while he doesn't even know if you can make it, you know? Second thing, issue of collaboration with other artists. There is a lot of artists that are open with collaborating with South African artists, but South African artists, they are bottling themselves. Sometimes I can use the term like they are home defenders because some of them, they never been even outside of the country. So they don't even try to interact with the people, other artists outside of the country. I was talking to Waye from Kenya. He wants to collaborate with the South African artist, but who can he collaborate with? You know, those are the kind of a thing, the artist managers, the labels, they need to start sitting on Facebook. I don't have an artist I'm working with. I don't, I don't have a record label, but I'm always on Facebook. I'm always on the internet talking to international promoters, talking to international artists, you know trying to see what they are doing. Are they interested to come here? Can we collaborate? We need those things, Don Power. Selector juggling, yeah. I know you are good on those things. Let's work on those things, you and Sting. I, need, I know you made some contacts at Sting, but when you're at Sting, those contacts you made there, make them work for you then now. Uh, Don Power, oh, yeah, can you come yeah, in yeah, there? No, not that, not that. We work, Don Power, we can take Don this. Power? Yeah, let's go to yes, Tempa and then we'll, in, in terms of looking outside the country and then collaboration. I think what EZ was talking about was collaboration with yes. other genders within the, within the country as well. So maybe can you address those issues? Yes, I think um, what we have tried to do, to do on our side is internationally, it is very challenging, but what we are trying to do to cross that bridge we are try, as a promoter and as a record label, I'm trying to put in finance because at a stage we are in the investment uh, level. We, I'm trying to put up money that um, and organize an event internationally, a big event that we can uh, book. Like Rototom, they gave me a space, but I was not in a position to take my artist there, you know. So what we need to do as promoters, we need to invest on our artists, send them there. The first performance, they don't know them. We can't be expecting that those promoters pay our artists. Like A.B. is saying, those people don't know us there. So we can't expect those promoters, whether it's Summer Jam or whatever, to pay our artists. What we need to do, they need to give us a slot. We pay for our artists, we fly them there. And then after we fly them there, they perform and they will get a good response. And then the next time, they will book the artist. When it comes to the collaboration, I think I've tried to contact a couple of artists. I won't mention their names, but it's big mainstream. This guy, this guy's what they are doing because our reggae is still on the low side. They want some money. Like, for example, a collaboration with a, a mainstream hip hop will cost you closely like 60K if you are lucky, 50K, unless you have that mutual uh, 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 um, uh, relationship. But it's things that we need to, to be going because it also doesn't help us to have a collaboration with someone on the low stream, you know? Uh, we need to hit the mainstream so that at least we can get some traction. And it's more of investment. Now, what we are saying, all the promoters, we need to invest on our artists. Yes, it's not making money now, but we need to start investing more on our artists, whether it be it collaboration, whether it be it touring, in where we're not gonna, we know for sure that we're not going to be making any money. We need to take that sacrifice for the love of this uh, music to progress. I think that's how I can uh, comment on that, Ross. Okay. Uh, ability, I see on the Facebook, they say your voice is slow. I think try to uh, up a volume a little bit. And I think we've lost Elder, Elder Richard. Uh, I, don't, I don't see him. Is he still there? That'd be a long time ago. Yeah, I think yeah, we, we've lost him. Yeah, we, we have about 20 minutes and uh, there's comments as well that we'll read along. And in terms of uh, selector juggling, looking outside and then collaboration with other artists internally. Well, the, the continent is ripe, man. You know, mm -hmm. the continent is ripe for, for our music right now. Um, shout out to artists like Jazzo, 
um, you know, bigger group for entertainment, they're doing big things, you know, they're pushing on the continent, you know. Um, as I said earlier, the socials, the socials help you to, to get out there. Uh, all you need to do is to know how to manage your socials. A lot of artists don't know how to manage their socials. You know, they don't, that, that social is your business. It's not your playground. It's your business, you know. So once you understand that that very same social can make you a millionaire, then people will act differently on the socials. So because a lot of people zoom into that. Today, when I say uh, 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 Jazzo, somebody else will go and, and, and check out Jazzo's uh, page. You know what I mean? And 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 his content is there. So 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 the content is the continent is ripe. We need to sample our networks, um, the promoters, the selectors, radios. We don't do that enough. We need to sample the networks. We need to sample each and every selector locally must have your latest song. When you have a song out, everybody must have the song, you know, um, locally and internationally. Um, so, 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 so definitely um, I don't see it as only looking outside because I believe um, we can talk about looking outside after we've exhausted inside. So it doesn't mean neglecting outside and looking outside doesn't mean neglecting inside. I think it works hand in hand. We just need to push brands and wherever, um, wherever it's gonna pop off, it's gonna pop off because you will find your market. There is your market out there. As long as you've got doing the right music and good music, your market is out there. Um, collaborations, I mean, we've, we've, we've done a lot of collaborations um, locally and internationally. Uh, in certain instances, many instances, in fact, especially with most mainstream artists, they want, they want a payment. But um, I think it's a matter of building relationships. You need to forge relationships. You need to find ways of forging relationships. You need to find ways of finding yourselves in the same space with certain artists that they just want to vibe with you because it's about a vibe as soon as they can feel your vibe whether you are big or not big it doesn't matter if you are spending a time within a certain space you know what they say you know if you if you are spending time around five millionaires you'll be the sixth if you are spending time around five intellectuals you'll be the sixth if you're spending time around five Dumbos, you'll be the six. So you need to choose where you want to be. You know what I mean? So, so, so you need to be deliberate, sir. You need to be, we need to, um, we need to play games, stop playing games. We need to be deliberate about what we're doing. When I wake up every day, I mustn't wake up and as an artist, and obviously this relates to artists, you know, I mustn't wake up every day and, and um, you know, just think of some, I, I need to, I need to be serious about my life. I need to understand if I wake up at six o'clock, how am I spending each and every minute and each and every hour of my life every day? When that day ends, what did I achieve as an artist? On the business side, the same thing. When the same thing applies every single day. When that day ends, what did I achieve? You then need to be able to take stock, do your, your, your weekly reports to say, okay, fine. My plan was to uh, go to this corner uh, for three days. And in that three days, I sold 30 CDs at 100 rand each, as an example. Or my plan was to write a new song, a new song that would fit Ukozi FM. Okay, maybe my the first thing I need to do is I just need to spend time just listening to Ukozi FM doing nothing but listen to Ukozi FM and hear what format is there? Because that's the other thing, you know, we don't look at the format of, of, of the spaces we're trying to go to. You know, you're going to YFM that plays youth, that is a youth station, you want to go there with old people music. You understand? Um, and I don't believe in that whole thing of, of, of playing music at after 10. That's nonsense. We want to be played on, on mainstream. Break up, break, breakfast show, drive time shows who want to be played in that slot. That other ones, those other spaces, I don't believe that there's a lot of value in that. Do you understand? So 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 Brave if you're being played, 
You say what? It's a graveyard slot. Exactly. <laughs> Understand. But but you don't undermine it. Um, uh, um, there's there's um, we're talking metros and ukozis here. How many community radio stations that are looking for content that do not have content? They're looking for content. They'll play you the whole day. How many of us are, are, are assembling those spaces? You know, regional radio stations. We need to focus on those and stop. You, you'll see the metros will come calling as opposed to us being in line, knocking on the door. There are things like um, radio samplers, you know, uh, plug, uh, radio plugs, you know, that will plug you. If you've got the, 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 the capital, you need to look at those people to put you in, into radio. Then you know, okay, fine, I don't have to worry about uh, getting my song on radio on how many platforms. Just give this guy money and he needs to guarantee me a certain number of um, uh, playlists. That's it. They, 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 they are there. Uh, they can I, can I? Maybe I'm looking at the time. Can we give uh, Don Power after that? We give uh, Shotazi if he has any questions, and then we'll come back and just to close off. Okay. Don uh, Power, I would, I, love to give, I would love to give my brother Shotazi. I wanted, I saw you wanted to say something before I can come in. Okay, Shotazi. Shotazi, are you there? I mute the mic. Sorry, I, I muted myself. Yeah, no, the, I think, you know, oh, juggling and uh, touch, you know, has expanded on what I was saying and he put it, you know, in the right way. And, uh, but, but what I also wanted to add was that, you know, what I also, you know, find with the, you know, the industry or most artists in the South African radio scene is that, you know, they fail to, to, to zoom in into their, their fans, you know. Uh, I, I'm going to give an example, you know, from, from being from a hip hop, you know, background, there's this artist, I call Mesh Homie. You know what Mesh Homie does is an underground hip hop artist. Uh, so what he does, he 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 he. he I mean, he whenever he he, he he releases an album, he makes limited edition uh, uh, vinyls. For instance, you know, uh, he made an album and then he only uh, printed hundred vinyls. Then from those hundred vinyls, what he does is that because he knows that he can't sell a million CDs, he can't get a million streams. Those hundred vinyls, he sells them at exuberant uh, prices. Uh, he once sold uh, one vinyl for one thousand dollars. And what that and what that does, you know, there are people who listen to Mesh Home who are his fans and are willing to pay for that in order to get an exclusive vinyl. And then those hundred people pay that money for those vinyls. And then what he did, Mesh Home, he 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 hosted a, a private event. For fans who bought his banners, just them, you know, and then they were let in for free. And then in that event, you know, they had to sit down with him, ask him whatever question, interact with him, exchange numbers, create a WhatsApp group for, for those hundred fans. And you know, that, that's how you create loyalty. That's how you, you make sure that we have fans who will be behind you. Whether you know you release a, a work album or, or, or hit album, those fans are going to defend you, are going to be banned. So uh, I would like to, you know, to, 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 to pose that as a challenge to, you know, to our radio artists in South Africa that, you know, you might want to have a million stream now or, or get paid on radio, but what about people who've been supporting you? You know, not all of us who just have been support. Some of us, you know, just say, ah, 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 on power, you know, pick up, you know, your food. But once you, you have a CD, don't buy a CD. You know, we just want to, you know, wrap shoulders with you, you know, be seen with you, but we won't support your ass. But there are those, act, those fans who just want to be your fans, you know, they don't want to be your friends. And then they will pay money to buy your CD. But what we do, you know, or what some artists do, they just, you know, treat those people as groupies instead of, you know, treating them as, you know, you know getting them closer. I think, we, I think that that's what needs to happen so that it is, artists have a loyal fan base. Because once you have a loyal fan base, that fan base are going to be your advocate, you know, to other uh, uh, people who are been, uh, uh, getting your music. You know, they're going to be your, your, your free marketers, you know, your certain people. So that's what I, I wanted to, to say. But I think, Soja, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, discussion points that I think, you know, came out from this discussion. Some we didn't touch, but hopefully we're going to have another session 
and more searching whereby we're going to boom into specific topics. So. Uh, I, I think because this was our first uh, visual talks, we'll, I think we're still going to have a lot of series. We'll also invite other promoters, uh, other personalities with, with and outside the reggae space as well. I mean, we know there's issues with media. We'll try to get someone from SABC or any other media platform so that we have a different uh, perspective. So basically, and as well, there's a... There's comments uh, on Facebook. There's something from Pepe where he's, I think we, we have about 10 minutes. There's something from Pepe where he's asking if, uh, about Patois, is there, why our artist, uh, is it necessary for our artist to uh, use uh, Patois as a language uh, of reggae music in South Africa? Is there anyone who wanna touch on that? I think um, I would just want to touch on that, Ras uh, uh, Soline. The, the use of Patwa, it is not a must. I mean, I, I've, I've, I'm, I've seen from my artist, Bongo Riot, uh, the three nominations that he has now, it, it comes from that versatility uh, of saying, we are still South Africans. Our music must relate to our South African uh, 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 market. Some of the uh, general people who are listening to our music, they don't understand a single word of Patwa. So to really try to sing more, if we really want to impress our South African massive, it is difficult if we're going to sing in part because then we can only get our rest. We are now saying we are focusing on our Rasta and reggae normal fans. So if we need to expand, we need to sing in part or in, in, in sorry, in, in vernacular so that at least our music can relate to almost everyone who's, who's a citizen of South Africa, be it Africans, Zulu, Koza, Sotho, I mean, I think it's something that uh, uh, most of our artists are starting to push. We need to really push more because even Zimbabwe, how it's big, they are doing it in the Venex. Just few of those artists who are, who are trying to do it in part of it. It is not a must. I mean, we, 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 we can still do it, but it mustn't be the majority of our compilation of part of it. Okay. There's a, a question there from uh, Okajia Kasi Boisin. Uh, he says, how much responsibility artist or musician must take in terms of promoting performances at shows compared to promoters? Uh, she says, some artists never promote shows they booked for, uh, thinking it's solely the responsibility of promoters. Any, any, any heads up there? Okay, I'll go first. Um, yep. For me, for me, it, it it ties in with the whole thing of understanding what a promoter is. So, so, so once we get to the business level of things, we'll understand that each one of us has got a role to play. When I promote a show, it's my show. It's my responsibility to promote that show. The artist's responsibility is to confirm that they are performing there, but it is not unless if you put it on the contract to say it is. Part of your job is promoting the show because the, problem, the artist is still building his own brand, still working on his own brand, um, and the artist has got their own marketing plan. So let's take, for, for, for example, that this artist performs how many weeks? Um, a year has got like, what, 52 weeks. This artist performs three times a week. All the, 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 the what do you call them? Um, all the weeks of the year. How many, so, so, so that artist socials will be flooded with shows that they are booked in. They can give a lineup of say, on this day I'm performing here, blah, 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 give a tour schedule. But it is not the artist's responsibility to then sit and promote because that's what promoters do. That's why I said we need to have different discussions at different levels. Yes, the artist must do the promotion, but it's not their cause. It's not, it's, it's not their responsibility. Me as the promoter, and, and that's why I'm saying, once we look at it from a business point of view, I will understand that it hits my pocket. So I'll structure the business plan in such a way that I make sure that I maximize on my marketing and I don't rely on somebody else to make that show happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, ability can can you come through shortly now? Yeah, to to add on that, I think uh, uh, oh, Jacqueline has just put it correctly. 
uh, I'm enough manager. I'm an artist up by I won't and enough manage them. You know, I've Mendoza have been there. There is not even in one page of the contract that the artist is a must, that he must promote the show of a promoter. That's why you are called a promoter because you are promoting your show. So that's a first. And second, other artists will charge you. Ask Casper your vest to, to for him. To tweet that is going to be playing on your show is going to tell you some is Mshongo is charging 45,000 rand just for tweet, you know? So it's not a must. Artists will charge you, aka will charge you to tweet, just to tweet. For my event, I have to get a PR company. I have to get a JT Communication because it's my event. I need a PR company to market my event. I need to get Josie FM. I need to get Place TV. Because it's my event. For me, I must make sure that I get the publicity, I get the marketing, I get a PR. I pay the artist to come and perform in my event. If the artist say to me, my brother, if you got um, an interview you want me to do, I'm available. Don't mind to shout out at me. It's just a favor. It's not a must. So that's why or juggling say the different communication in a different level are important because promoters they're gonna mix things because they don't understand the industry these people who are raising that issue is the people who don't understand how the industry work artist managers there is an artist managers there is an artist there's a road manager there is a there is an agency there is a record label there is a pr it's a stages that's why you put together a team that will work behind you. American artists do that. They will have about eight people working. That's why American artists, I book international artists. I think you guys know that. If I book Joe Thomas to come to South Africa, he got a road manager, he got a production manager, he got a front of house, he got the monitor engineer, he got a lighting engineer. That's just technical. He got a PR, he got a stylist. So we need to start focusing on artist on the business side of artist so that we understand the business side because we're going to end up talking and mixing things that yes. are not adding value to this discussion uh, i think we have a lot of comments i think some of the comments will cover in our next series of uh, of visual uh i think we left about i think each other for two minutes oh so, sorry, uh, sorry 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 um, mm. I just got a WhatsApp from Franz Pinas in Holland. He would like to be a part of this as well next time. And I got another request from a friend of mine in uh, Brazil, Intershows, Israel. He will also like to be a part of this. He is, is a booker for Alpha Blondie and uh, Julian Mali in, in Brazil. He just hit me out. So next time, I think we can have international guests. I, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll have other series and then we'll ha uh, invite more and, uh, and a diverse uh, yeah. a diverse, uh, a diverse guest as well, because I see it's only the boys. So we need to integrate the and have the, the, mothers, the ladies, with the yeah, mothers. Yeah. you know, the, the queens to be part of the discussion. <laughs> uh, I think two minutes each. Uh, what are you imagining? being the next step. Can I get it to say in short two minutes from each guest? What are you imagining being the next step? Um, for, for me, I'm imagining a reggae, South African reggae infused, like all other uh, 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 entertainment, infused with other genius. And we have a slot on each, on, on every big festival, we must have a reggae representation. That's what I'm imagining, and that's what I believe is going to create a bridge uh, the borders. Okay, uh, ability. Uh, I I just hope there can be respect and unity amongst the artists, so that the, the the ones that are running the business behind the scene of the artist can work together to assist each other. If I got a link somewhere, I can call or juggling and say, "Oh, juggling, I got this link. Do you wanna explore?" If you say, no, 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 I'm busy that time, I can call Don Power. But the unity among artists themselves, it's very important. And they stop this fight on Facebook. This Facebook part is not really helping anyone. You know, 
uh, they are boys who just went to India as well. A shout out to them. They were playing in India. Let's grow this industry because they went there as South Africans and as South African selectors, reggae selectors. So we need more of those things. Let's work together and try to see how can we grow the industry and stop being jealous about each other. Okay, so firstly, um, we all need to understand that reggae all over the world is promoted by people who love it. So, so, so we need not disrespect each other um, like, like as if, you know, people are helping somebody to, to, to push this reggae music. So it's, it's, it's only people that love reggae music all over the world. You can do your research that push reggae music. It's not being eaten by people outside. Now, what changes the conversation um, to it being eaten by people outside is when it is popping. It is when people will, will present a viable, something of value that somebody wants to buy. Now, that brings me to the point that we are in the business of music. Never mind, forget reggae for a second. We are in the business of music. Key being the word business, a business like any other. So once we understand that at every level, an artist who will spend money to record on his own or a label spending money to produce an album for an artist, everyone would understand in that chain to say there is money that is spent. So I'm not going to take Somebody will call me, oh, I, uh, no, I've got an event, I've got 2,500 for you. I'm in Bloomfontein, in Lesotho or Northwest, wherever. They will first start, break it down, break that 2,000 down to say, for me to go there, how much does it cost? How much did it cost me for somebody to even consider to call me to come to the event? Same way with the promoters. I don't have a problem with a promoter that doesn't uh, book my artist. My artist is not uh, of value to them because I understand that they are running their business. They will go for what they believe will make them money. And I'm happy with that. I will focus on spaces whereby I understand that these are potential spaces to make money for my, for my, for my business and, and explore more in that space. So there's... Um, there's, there's the subject that we didn't touch on today, which is the um, royalty society, royalty collection society. You know, your Sambros, your, your Impra, Sambras, the Capasos, etc. We, 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 still, we still have other series next week. Uh, yeah, or, that's, uh, yeah so that, we that's will, another space yeah, where we need to yeah, explore another, and talk about yeah, how yeah. do we make, get the best out of, out of that. So yeah. in short, I, for me, Key parting, my parting shot would be let's always understand that we we are a business and we need to run like any other business. Okay, shot as it. Yeah, yeah. Well, for me, you know what I would like to see uh, is more reggae music on online. You know, I want the South African you know reggae artists to start you know utilizing platforms like Endcamp, you know Spotify, uh, Google Music, YouTube, and all those things. Because it's a struggle, you know, to get South African uh, reggae music online. I think we saw that before the start of the session. So hopefully, also this will be one of the you know upcoming series where we're going to focus on you know digital digitalization of South African reggae music. Been on Bandcamp, I was earlier on Bandcamp, you know, tried to to search for you know maybe four of the popular artists at the moment who are considered to be hot. In SA reggae, but none of them are on Bandcamp. And Bandcamp is a platform whereby it's not like Spotify where you just stream, you know, for free or you pay a certain fee month, month. End. Where, you know, uh, artists directly sell their music, you know, that music is not going anywhere, it's going to directly to the artist's pocket. And I was surprised that, you know, African artists are not, you know, uh, monetizing on that platform. Hopefully, uh, upcoming series uh, are going to touch on, the, on those of digitalizing uh, reggae music. Uh, thanks, everybody. I would like to, I think we are about to close. We've been here for two hours. I thought we are going to last only 45 minutes, <laughs> but I can see now and now we've, we've pushed for two hours. Uh, I'd like to thank my guests uh, for coming through. 
uh, and then for giving an insight and so that we, we learn from our guests. I am hoping that even uh, so if you are there at home, you're an artist, you are a reggae fan, you are a reggae promoter, you are anything within the space of reggae, you've learned something and it, it will kind of open your mind. You start thinking outside the box so that we, we grow the, the, the music. I mean, we, we can't be... In the, we can't be here for the next coming 20 or 10 years. We need to be somewhere in the next coming five years or 10 years. So I'd just like to thank everybody who have tuned in. Uh, please follow us uh, at San Jaming, uh, hashtag San Jaming, hashtag Reggae Talks, at Solima Lati. We're going to have more uh, conversations with various, various personalities within the space and hopefully after a certain time, we'll have an idea in terms of what do we need to, uh, to do. Uh, my guest, I really appreciate, and I, 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 I like from the bottom of my heart to thank you very much for, for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, guys. To us, a man is hard to find. So we look, search, and find. No, 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 no. The one close to a heart. The one close to a heart. Mr. Tandan, yan, yan, yan. I get come moon, and the pan never go. Mr. Tandan, yan, yan, yan. I get come moon. Where mama wab and run the bam, wab and run the bam, eh gosh. When I ubu bu bu me bam, bu me bam. We ya ikoli sintizi yo ya. And get conjingale, and get 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 and